we are up. I'm going to start recording now so we can upload it later on. And with that, hey everybody, my name is Aaron, aka Gamer Medic, aka Medic. I am here with Kip Kotsigas. He is New Zealand's former strongest man. Um, so, Kip, thank you for being here with me. Pardon? Thank you. <laughs> I've only got a second. I've only got a second of the one of us from New Zealand's strongest men. Okay, what a, one, of, one of New Zealand's strongest men. None of them need either way. But uh, thanks for joining me here today, uh, Kip. I appreciate your time. And uh, we have a lot of people here just uh, not here right now, but in the past that are just wondering about fitness, about CrossFit. And I thought it'd be a good time for just for us to sit down just because I'm a part of your CrossFit gym. So I'd uh, be interested to hear your thoughts on a few things. Uh, but before we get there, uh, do you mind just telling us a little bit about yourself and about the gym that you work at? So let me just hear right off the hop, like you, what kind of pursuits you're going, going into right now in terms of your fitness journey? and the different kinds of sports that you've played up until this point. Cool. Um, so in terms of my pursuits currently with my fitness journey, um, it's, I guess, a bit more maintenance at the moment, I'm trying to get stronger. Um, I've got a bad right shoulder at the moment, so just trying to rehab that at the same time, whilst I'm also doing some squats and deadlifts to get my lower body a bit stronger. Um, I would like to get back into some more strongman competitions as I've done in the past. Um, in 2021, last year, we went into lockdown around August. Um, prior to that, had been training for a few competitions. And so with the way we usually do our training cycles, we would train for about two, three months at a time. We'd have a competition and then we'd have another training cycle for two or three months of another competition. Um, but just with the way things were going in New Zealand last year, um, with the mandates, with things changing, with lockdowns, all that kind of stuff, um, I just, I got a bit burnt out on the training because we'd get close to a competition a couple of weeks before to get postponed or get cancelled, put off whatever else. Mm -hmm. and, and when we went into lockdown last year in August, um, by that point, I've been training for months and months and months and months and I'm going strong as man. Um, I really want to take that off, off my yeah. um, I'd like to win that. Um, one day I'd like to tell my son and maybe my grandkids that, you know, I, I, I won New Zealand Strongman Nationals. I used to be the strongest man in New Zealand and under 105 previously. And they can, oh, whatever, granddad. But, um, I thought yeah, for sure. Probably one day. Um, but yeah, that one got put off again. And so when that happened, I threw my toys out of the cot. I said, I'm not doing this shit anymore. Sorry. Can I swear? <laughs> yeah, yeah go ahead. No, it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> um, yeah, but I threw my toys out of the cot. I got a bit over it with that. Um, but then recently got back into doing a bit more of the, the strength training again. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe about three or four months ago. Um, with a couple of the boys started coming back in that used to be in our strongman crew that started coming back in training with me after lunch classes um, which is also where you're now joining with us as well quite, yes. often, quite often which is cool yeah um, yeah so I guess that's, that's kind of my pursuits in terms of training at the moment I'm just trying to be generally healthy I'm trying to keep myself in good shape um, get a bit stronger if I can I've still got some strength goals I'd like to hit um, like for example, I haven't PR'd my squat since 2015 powerlifting nationals and like I've squatted consistently since then. Mm -hmm. So it's been seven years since I've had a PR, um, which was 500 pounds back then. Um, Holy. I like that, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, uh, I'd like to deadlift 300 kilos as well. All right. Um, but yeah, I guess those are kind of my training goals in terms of what I'm able to do at the moment or where I like to try to get to. Um, and then with my upper body, once my shoulder gets better, um, yeah. and strong man with our overhead movements, we have three lifts typically um, that, are, uh, that we have New Zealand records for um, in terms of like the most weight you can clean and press overhead. So we've got a monster dumbbell clean and press, um, a log clean and press, and then an axle clean and press. Um, I currently hold the under 105 New Zealand record with the axle clean and press at 141 kilos, I think it is. Um, the log I used to have at 131 kilos, but I think that's up close to 140 now. Um, I'd like to push it up a little bit further if, if I can one day. Um, and then with the monster dumbbell, I think the New Zealand record in the under 105s is around 90-ish. And um, I think my PR there is about 85. But I think I think after a little bit of training with it, I'll be able to get closer to 100. Nice. Um, so it'd be cool. It'd be cool if I could get all three of those New Zealand records. Like Chris, one of the guys I trained with in the under 90s, had mm -hmm. the under 90s. Um, or at least he used to. I think he still has all three of them. But yeah, the, the log, the axle, and the monster dumbbell. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay. Does it answer your question? Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. So as of right, as of right now, what are your PRs for the, for the main lifts? So I think for strongman, it's deadlift, bench press, squat, and then also the, the, over the, the log, right? Overhead presses, yeah. The overhead press. Yeah. Um, so for my back squat, I've hit 227 and a half kilos in the past 500 pounds. 
Um, presently, I think it's probably around 220-ish. Um, so not too far off being able to get another PR there, which would be nice. Mm-hmm. Um, front squat, I think I've hit around 195. Nice. The first wow. attempt at 200 back in 2014. And it's been that long, I still haven't bloody hit it. Um, so I'd, I'd like to uh, get my upper back. My upper back's not very healthy. Um, I tend have a tendency to arch a bit much. And I've just, um, something in my T-spine just, just didn't like that position, obviously, because my joints aren't stacked when I'm arching my back. Um, mm-hmm. So just trying to get that back to a healthy space. And then I'd like to try to push that for 200. Um, I've push pressed, I think 136 or maybe 140. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd like to push that up closer to 150. Uh, bench press, I haven't tried a PR in a while, but previously I've hit uh, 150 with the pause. I've done 150 close grip, and then I think I've done 151 um, with, uh, with like a, a thumb length off the smooth, which is typically how I get my guys to train for that. Because I know a lot of power lifters will go wider so that they can utilize their pecs a little bit more and get that better leverage. Yeah. Um, but for us in Strongman, we're trying to use the bench press as a tool to get stronger for some of our overhead lifts. Um, so typically having that slightly narrower grip causes us to engage the triceps uh, a bit more, a little bit front delts and everything else. Less pec involvement, um, which doesn't make you as strong of a bencher, but it will make you a stronger overhead presser, which is what we're trying to use it as a tool for. Mm-hmm. Um, did lift off at 285. Want to get that close to 300. I think at the moment I'm probably around 280 um and then yeah log clean and press i've hit 131 axle clean and press i've hit 141 and then the monster dumbbell clean and press i think i've hit 85 i think it's my PR with that one okay wow so okay so 141 in terms of pounds for those of us that don't know that what would that be <laughs> uh, that'd be that'd be close to 310 310 wow that's insane so that just goes to show kip is a strong guy and i've seen Hmm? Go ahead, go ahead. There was 141 you were asking? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. About okay. Pounds. Yeah. So Sorry. that just goes to show. Strong man, mm-hmm. I've seen you lift the in cra- uh, insane like mobility in terms of your ankles. I can't squat like you squat. That's some... I can't squat with that wide stance you do. I'm <laughs> to do that as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. But uh, so that's just about Kip, a little bit about Kip. We'll just move on right on into just talking about CrossFit in particular, because I know you're also a CrossFit instructor. Um, for those who don't know, what is like, what, what would you call CrossFit? What is CrossFit? Uh, CrossFit is... There's many different ways you can describe it in scientific terms and everything else, but basically it's, um, well, one of the slogans we use is, what is it? Constantly varied high intensity functional movements. So functional movements executed at high intensity, um, but constantly varied. So there's uh, basically a whole bunch of different whole body movements, typically. Um, Movements you'll see more out in the real world. Um, You won't see many curls. You won't see many leg extensions. You won't see many isolation movements. We do have some of them in there from time to time as accessory work. Um, Keep the body healthy. Keep the muscles, the joints, everything healthy as well because we tend to beat the shit out of our bodies, Um, particularly some of our members that come five, six days a week. Um, So we have some of that stuff in there to try to keep the body in one piece and nice and healthy and bulletproof, as as we say. Um, But CrossFit, is it's a lot of uh, conditioning. There's a Mm -hmm. lot of whole body movements. There's a lot of trying to get stronger, trying to get more flexible. Um, so, I mean, in terms of what we do with CrossFit, we're trying to increase what we call your fitness. Um, in terms of fitness, we have 10 different components. Um, let me give, let me have a go off the top of my head. But we have yeah. agility, balance, accuracy, strength, cardiovascular endurance, stamina. I might have already said flexibility, agility, um, speed, power, all, all those things. So, mm-hmm. with CrossFit, the goal is to try to get as good as we can at all 10 of those components, not one or two to the detriment of others. Um, so for example, someone like a power lifter or a bodybuilder, they might be really strong, they might be really powerful, but they might lack that flexibility or that yeah. balance or that agility or something else. And there's nothing against them. They're training for what they want to train for and they're managing to achieve that, which is awesome. But what we're trying to do at CrossFit is we're trying to get good at all 10 of those components at once, not just one or two to the detriment of others. Um, and we do that through what we call constantly varied high intensity functional movements. Um, so basically just a whole bunch of different functional movements, constantly varying them. It's not random, right? They're still um, structured to our program and everything else. Mm-hmm. We're not just constantly beating the shit out of one joint, one muscle group or anything. Yeah. Um, but the program is constantly varied. Um, it's constantly changing. So that every time you guys come in or every time somebody comes in, um, there's always going to be something new there to test or something different to test, something to work on, something to train on. Um, unlike a regular gym where a lot of people go in and it's chest and tries on Monday, back and buys Tuesday, leg day Wednesday. Um, if you can never make a Tuesday, for example, you're not always going to miss out on back squats or handstands or on kipping pull-ups, whatever else. 
um, the program constantly rotates, it's constantly varied. Um, but for most people, it keeps things fresh, it keeps them engaged, it keeps them having fun. And when people are engaged and having fun when they're exercising, that's when they're most likely to be consistent with it, which honestly yeah. I think is the biggest key in terms of fitness or anything lifestyle and health related. It's just, just consistent, uh, which I imagine would be the same with business and finances, everything else and your relationships and everything too. It's just that consistency. So, yeah. Uh, one person's fun. One person's fun is definitely another person's not so much fun. Like I know, Absolutely. I know personally. I know personally. I know you keep talking about this whole fun thing, but when I'm in the middle of a class, not I'm like, I hate Kip. How dare he make me do this? We just had something yesterday called the Devil's Press. I'm in the middle of like on the ground. I'm like, I gotta press myself back up and then clean this dumbbell. I don't know how I feel about this, but at the end of the day, I do have to say I feel great about myself. It is fun at the at, at the end, but during during it, it is constant high intensity. I have to I have to agree with you there. It's constant high intensity. So I appreciate it though. Like it it definitely helps with the fitness. And you kind of touched on one of the questions I had, which was like. It, for you, what do you consider fitness? And I guess in terms of CrossFit, there's like the 10 components, right? But if you could talk to someone like on the street and they're just like, Kip, like what is, what does it mean to be fit? How would you tell them in layman's terms? Like this is what fit means to me. Uh, to me, because I'm a CrossFitter or I've been a CrossFitter for 12 plus years now, um, fitness to me is just your ability to be ready to, sorry, so your, your ability, your capability to be able to do anything and everything that you want or need to physically. Um, so whether that is scaling a wall, whether that is having to go and run 5Ks, whether that is there's a heavy rock in your path, are you strong enough to be able to lift it and move it over? Are you fit enough? Do you have the capabilities? Are you fit for this purpose? Um, that, that's what fitness is to me. Mm -hmm. um, a big component of that in CrossFit is the conditioning. That's the biggest part of what we do typically, as well as the functional movements and trying to move better and technique and all those things. And some people will hear that and go, CrossFitters have no technique, but um, there's there's... There's a reason for why we do a lot of the different movements we do and the ways we move and everything else. Um, we're not necessarily trying to cut corners. Um, you will get the odd person that is trying to. Um, and within Trailblazer, we try our best to cut that out. We try our best to step down on that and get people to understand that we're not just trying to get this work done as quickly as possible. We want high quality with our movement too. Um, this, I don't think this was your question. Your question was fitness, right? What is fit? Mm. Um, so to me, Fit is just your ability, uh, your capabilities, uh, your capacity to be able to um, do whatever it is that, that life asks or demands of you, whether that's running 5K, whether that's being able to pick up your grandkids, run around with them, not have your back hurt, um, whether that's your maybe your six-year-old grandma that's just being able to get up off the couch without assistance, without your knees hurting. Yeah. Um, you could be a senior professional athlete. Fit for you might be you being capable of going and playing your sport and performing excellently. Um, so to me, fit is if you're capable of doing the things that you know life demands you or your goals demand of you or whatever else does that make sense yeah no for sure i think that makes sense and i'm pretty sure that like, it's it's a pretty easy easy definition i think for for um fitness um but going back to crossfit i know crossfit is kind of like the the i don't know i it's kind of like the the ability to become uh, or be able to do all of these things, which I think is very, uh, very useful. Um, if yeah. I could ask more about kind of like the the programming of the class itself, um, how would you, how would you, how do you program? Because you're the, you're in charge of programming classes there at, at Trailblazer, correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Head coach and CEO and yeah. founder and all those other. Oh, so you're the founder of Trailblazer yeah. too. Yeah, bro. That's oh, all right. <laughs> you're the big dog. You're the big dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Tell me about tell me about uh, your programming. How do you program these things? Um, with our programming, we've got a good relationship um, with another gym up in Auckland uh, called CrossFit East Tamaki, or I think they're now called Renegade Performance. Um, but previously, back when I did used to do all the programming myself from scratch, create everything else, um, which we don't do anymore. But back mm -hmm. when I did used to do that, um, we used to have competitions as you did with CrossFit. Um, we'd have weightlifting competitions and everything else within CrossFit. Um, there was an annual one in New Zealand each year. And you basically would have your top three female scores, your top three male scores um, by Sinclair. So Sinclair is the weight you lift relative to your body weight. Okay. Um, relative to what the world record in your weight classes or something like that. Um, but basically you would have your team's Sinclair score um, and then who's ever gym had the biggest Sinclair 
from the top three males and top three females would win the prize, like get the X, Y, Z, whatever else, um, which is cool. But for us, we just, we were very uh, performance driven, very competition, not very competition driven, but that was there in, in the back of our heads. And we just, we were trying to win things. Yeah. And um, it was always for, I think about three or four years, we'd come second and East Tamaki, the gym where Jim is from, my partner, uh, where she used to be from, um, would beat us by about 10 Sinclair points, which is not very much at all. Okay. And so yeah. we'd go away, we'd train hard, we'd do all the CrossFit, we'd do all the weightlifting training, the strength training, everything else. And we'd come back the next year and we'd bump our score up by another 100, 200 Sinclair points. And then again, they'd beat us by 10 points again. Um, so it's had a really good relationship there. Um, got on well with them um, through that and everything else. Um, so from there, we, we outsource our programming. Mm -hmm. um, we pay them, they give us their programming that they've done the week prior so they basically test it out before they send along to the affiliates that are signed up for it um i get that i tweak it i adjust it um because i love them i love cullen but sometimes cullen's a guy that programs for them um yeah. they're, they're head coach um but sometimes he just he beats the shit out of some structures like for example sorry if you listen to this comment i don't want to point, point you out or anything uh but <laughs> for example um on this monday gone we had a bunch of kipping pull-ups in one of the workouts um so it's a gymnastics moment where you're using a bit of momentum by manipulating your midline more to help you get your chin over the bar um so that can be quite taxing on your calluses on your hands on mm -hmm. the tuesday we had toe to bar which again you're hanging from the bar you're doing that kipping motion uh yesterday wednesday we had some strict pull-ups today we were supposed to have some bar muscle ups and other bits and pieces um so there's just four days in a row there we were hanging from the rig on our hands just your calluses get really tingy yeah and when the tap calluses get tender it typically takes a couple of days for them to recuperate yeah um, and if i saw it's hard to grab and grip onto things um so in terms of the program we get from there my biggest part there is tailoring it adjusting it trying to optimize it so that um we have a lot of members they love coming almost every day they love coming four five six times a week um so it's trying to adjust it so that they have the ability to be able to do that so they're not constantly beating up the same structure so the structures get a little bit of rest a little bit of break between doing those things Good, yeah. um yeah so in terms of programming we get from there i tailor it i adjust it um but a few main things we try to work on is the clean and jerk we try to work on the snatch these movements with the barbell mm -hmm. um we've always got some variation of squats going on to build up that strength um whole body but the, the particular of the legs the hips and the midline um there be some upper body pressing, whether that's overhead press with the bar, whether that's some bench press variation. Um, it could be handstand push-ups, ring dips, whatever else. Um, we have some pull-up variations. You've got all your kipping and butterfly pull-ups. We're doing workouts, but sometimes we have some strict pull-ups like we did yesterday as part of our strength work. Um, and then from there as well, each session always has some conditioning as well. Um, so typically with the CrossFit wad, the majority of them in most classes would previously be between seven to 12 minutes um majority sorry sorry let me with a bit better the majority of them are between five to 15 minutes um with the most of those being between seven to 12. um we were at in our training at the moment as we're starting to prep for uh, the crossfit open which starts in february it's a worldwide competition um where anybody can enter they uh, release the workouts on i think it's the thursday here in new zealand or friday friday here in new zealand thursday over in the states um and you get about three or four days to complete the workout send your score back in get it verified everything else um and then from there at the top, however many go away to, it used to be called regionals. What's it called now? Is it sanctionals? I can't even remember, sorry. <laughs> no I've worries. Been outside of the competition side across it for a minute. Yeah. So I don't really remember all the names as I should, as well as I should probably. Um, but that CrossFit Open is always very heavily conditioning based. Okay. Um, there's always a bunch of skills in there as well. Sometimes they'll test some um, strength work in there too. Uh, but with our training at the moment, we've just started another training cycle this Monday gone. Um, there's more conditioning in here. Um, there's some more conditioning pieces. There's some more what we call mixed modal pieces, um, meaning like with our movements in CrossFit, we have gymnastics based movements, which is anything body weight related, squatting, push ups, climbing over a wall, jumping onto a box anytime you're using your body weight, we consider that to be gymnastics. Um, we have weightlifting movements, which is movements of objects outside of our body. So not just a snatch and clean and jerk, but maybe like a dumbbell clean and press, maybe picking up a mate who's had too much to drink and carrying them off, um, <laughs> maybe carrying them groceries inside. Anytime yeah. there's an object outside your body, we consider that weightlifting. Um, and then the third one as well is what we call cardio-based movements, which is your typical running, rowing, jump rope, um, ski erg, assault bike, all that kind of stuff. Um, so with the mixed modal work, we're trying to incorporate a lot of those together um, because when you mix and match them a little bit, when you when you do a lot of them together, it just the effects change. Um, the way your body's able to cope with some of the stresses and everything else changes a little bit. Um, 
And that's always what comes up in the CrossFit Open. So we've got a bit of that going on at the moment as well. Um, summertime's just about to start here. So getting people shredded for, for the beach over the Christmas period. Yeah, yeah, um, and then sure. when they go away, when they come back, hopefully they've got a good base of conditioning that we can hit the ground running going leading forwards into the CrossFit Open in February next year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, does that answer your question, bro? Yeah, no, it answers fantastically. You went above and beyond, Kev. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so, so say, for example, we have some people in the chat now, like, uh, I'm not motivated. Uh, you know, I haven't been in the gym in a while. Or someone who's like, I have a passing fascination, fascination with CrossFit. I want to do a class one day. What can someone expect uh, on their first day of classes? Like, what, 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 if I'm brand new... You know, I haven't done a, a day of CrossFit. I don't know how to do a kipping pull-up. I don't know how to do, like, the devil's press. I can't jump over a box. It, do I have to be able to do all of these movements to join a CrossFit class? Or is there something that can be done to help me still have fun during a CrossFit session? Absolutely. Um, CrossFit is what we call infinitely scalable, meaning whether you are a six-year-old grandmother who's sat on the couch for the past 20 years, never been in a gym, um, or you are a 20-year-old professional athlete, we can tailor things up or down to your level as we need to. So for example, something like a push-up, um, which most people will have an idea of what that is, touching your chest to the floor and pressing up, locking out your arms. If you find that difficult on your feet, we can scale you down and go down onto your knees. So push-ups on the knees. If you find it difficult on your knees, we can scale it down further. You're doing a push-up against the box or against the wall um, until we build up your capacities with that and then we'll slowly titrate that intensity and the difficulty of the movement upwards. Um, so that we're, again, we're meeting you at your level. Um, again, if you're a 20-year-old professional athlete, you find push-ups on the ground easy. We then have handstand push-ups we can do up against the wall. Um, we can build them definitely with that so we're coming lower and lower with that handstand push up to make it more and more difficult uh, so again we can tailor things to people's levels um so if people haven't been into a crossfit gym before and the first crossfit class that come along to hopefully hopefully it will be a fundamentals class um it isn't always uh, we run a fundamentals course at CrossFit, uh, Trailblazer, sorry. Um, it's a three-week course. It meets three nights a week for the three weeks. Uh, we start with the basics. We start with the fundamentals. We make sure people have a good grounding, um, a good understanding, good solid foundation of movement. Um, and then we build upon those basics with more complexity as the course progresses and carries on. Um, so that by the time those people have finished the three weeks, by the time they've finished those nine sessions, they understand what's going on. They know what it feels like to get out of breath, to get uncomfortable and still keep pushing a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, we know that when they go into the regular CrossFit classes, they'll have an understanding of how to perform a kipping pull-up or a scaled variation thereof. Maybe it's a banded kipping pull-up, so the band's going to assist them pulling their, with, with their weight, pulling their chin over the bar. Yep. Um, maybe they're doing a jumping pull-up because they're not there with the band yet. Um, which is people have a better understanding of what's going on, how to move their body, what it is we're looking for, um, understanding some of the lingo. Because when you first get into CrossFit, it's like a whole other language with all the things that we say. Can like confirm. Like AMRAP, like <laughs> pull-ups. Yeah. 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 Like a deal was there, bro. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, does that answer your question? Yep. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, so if, for example, I can't afford uh, the CrossFit membership, or like my, my trial runs out, CrossFit membership, you know, I can't afford the weekly thing, but I still want to do kind of like CrossFit-y type stuff. Um, I just want to work out at home. What would what would you say like like a good few exercises that someone could do at home just to kind of prepare them? Maybe they want to do CrossFit later, but not quite now. They're not quite ready. What is a few exercises that you would suggest doing kind of at home just to kind of, you know, kind of give it a feel, like give it the CrossFit yeah. feel? Um, it depends on what they have access to. If they don't have access to any uh, equipment, any implements, it's completely mm -hmm. fine. Because again, CrossFit is what we call functional movements. Um, there's a lot of movements we can do without any uh, equipment. Um, so, I mean, like you've got the likes of air squats, push-ups, sit-ups. Um, maybe you've got a park bench you could do some dips on. What was the other one in my head? Sit-ups. I think I said that. Burpees. Uh, maybe you've got a step you can jump up onto and step down. Maybe do some lunges or some step-ups onto that box, whatever else. Um, so for people at home that uh, aren't there with going into a CrossFit gym yet, you can mix and match those different movements in many different ways. Um, with our CrossFit workouts, typically they'll be what we call time priority workouts, um, where there's two ways here. We've got time priority workouts and task priority workouts. I'm not quite sure which is which, but I think time priority ones is where um, the amount of work I think the amount of time is set with the time priority workout and you try to get through as much work as you can in that amount of time. So let's say, for example, we have what we call a 10 minute AMRAP. AMRAP, A-M-R-A-P, stands for as many rounds as possible. If you have a 10 minute AMRAP, trying to form as many rounds as possible in that 10 minutes. And there might be a 10 minute AMRAP of 
five push-ups, 10 sit-ups, and 15 air squats. And you just try to do that as many times as you can in 10 minutes. Um, and then another variation with those exact same movements, um, it might be a, a task priority workout where the amount of work is set. We're trying to get to that work as quickly as we can. So in that instance, with those same movements, it might be uh, three rounds of 30, 30 air squats, 20 sit-ups, 10 push-ups. You're trying to get to those three rounds as quickly as you can. Maybe there's a short run in between each of those rounds or whatever as well. Um, just practicing some of those things if you're wanting to get into it but you're not there with going in yet will can help you build up a little bit of a base first off um just getting used to getting out of breath getting your heart rate up um all these things will help you a little bit with condition as well um but honestly the biggest thing i can say there is is no matter how fit you are no matter how unfit you are that first time you go in it's going to feel uncomfortable at some point mm -hmm. um the fitter you are in these workouts, the fitter you are, it doesn't feel any easier per se. It doesn't get any nicer. The fitter you are, the faster you can move, the less rest time you need. So again, that intensity goes up further. It meets you at your level no matter where you're at. If you're really unfit and you haven't done anything, you've never stepped foot in the gym before or you haven't done any exercise for 20, 30 years, um, again, you're still going to get uncomfortable. Um, but the coaches, one of their roles there is to try to tailor the, the workouts, try to optimize them for the person, for the level, meet them where they're at. Um, so that they can get the most effectiveness out of the training session per se. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time as well, we don't want to beat the shit out of people on their first session. We don't want to put them off. Um, we want to give them a good experience. You're going to get out of breath. You're going to push yourself. You're going to challenge yourself no matter what. Um, and then from there, those endorphins get released through your workout, particularly at the end of it when we're all done, um, when we're all sweaty, when we're out of breath, uh, we'll turn the music down when the time's up, when the clock's up, when the workout's done, whatever else. Um, and then we go around, high five each other, knuckle bump each other, celebrate our hard work. Um, but I think the point I was trying to get at there is you will never truly be ready for CrossFit. It's just getting started, just getting in the door. Honestly, that first session, just getting in the car and getting in there is the hardest part. Yeah. Um, once you get amongst it a couple of times, the hardest thing is just getting in the car. Once mm -hmm. you do that, you'll drive to the gym. Once you're at the gym, um, the programming is all taken care of. The coach will make sure that you're moving well. They'll help optimize, scale things for you as we need to. Um, because everything we do is group-based, everything we do, we do together within classes, within groups. Um, you get that community feel and community vibe going on. So after a few sessions with some of these people, um, for a lot of me our members, it becomes a social outlet for them they come along they're hanging out with their mates and at the same time they're getting a great workout in as well mm -hmm. um yeah did i answer your question yep. I yeah yeah no nope, you're good <laughs> yeah I, we just had someone say that sore is sexy though <laughs> sore is sexy uh i'm assuming he just finished uh he just finished the workout chest and arms are killing him i'm like i'm like yeah sore is sexy but only after the fact though sore is not sexy while i'm while i'm trying no, to hop over it? a box and tripping <laughs> over things but i do to your point though like to multiple points but to the first point like i am not inherently like by crossfit means a fit person but being a and definitely showing up to that first time that first crossfit session like probably like three weeks ago now was the, literally so hard to be like i know i'm gonna fail i'm used to playing like american football like this is going to be completely Five different short duration yeah exactly and they have and then of course we had the uh 400 was it 800 meter run no 400 800 meter run in that 800 meter, yeah you can row we can <laughs> bike no 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 I nah, this, bro. yeah it was 800 meter 800 meter run right off the hop i'm like well i guess i gotta run now but again <laughs> like again you gave me the option to scale like it is possible to scale if you aren't able to do it i think it might have been just my pride was like it's my first time i can't <laughs> i gotta i gotta do what's right now I, I can't be the only <laughs> one scaling <laughs> but yeah eventually though you get to the point like you said like having all those people i used to be one that would work out by myself i put on my headphones i just do my you know upper body what lower body do the bros br do the bro split maybe do you know go back to my football workouts do my football workouts and just be by myself but having those other people around me uh like kobe the kobe yesterday like i was watching him work out and him go putting through put himself through the pace was like man this guy's awesome like, and then it starts to you know help me i'm like okay now i gotta push myself because this man's pushing himself <laughs> yeah. harder than i am pushing myself i can't be the I have to be the hardest person in, working in the gym. Like this guy's working harder than me. But and from you, that, because you've yeah. got all those people there all working hard, it just raises the level. I might yeah. experience this anyway. It raises the level of what it is you're trying to do. So mm -hmm. because you got all these people around working hard, you don't want to half ass things. You want no. to push yourself a little bit. And yeah, yeah. yeah it, it just it, it increases the intensity. Yeah. Um, intensity is that biggest variable that leads to those favorable adaptations, i.e., gains, whether mm -hmm. that's getting stronger, losing weight, trying to be more sexy with your shirt off, whatever else. Um, 
Yeah, sorry, I, I slipped on your toes. Like, Carry on. <laughs> no, no, exactly, exactly. So if you guys it, like chat viewers after the fact on youtube or whatever if you're interested in and, and just kind of scared of going into the gym honestly don't be scared especially i don't know what it's like where you are but at trailblazer here it was a fantastic experience you know they have, on saturdays people go out and hang out with each other it's not just like a you hang out just during the class and then you'll disperse sure there's i mean yeah. many times like you do do that but it is definitely it is definitely a community-based workout system that I find is yeah. unlike anything else. It, it feels most to me like when I was playing football and you work out with other people playing football and like everyone's pushing each other. Everyone's like, everyone wants what's best for each other. And I feel like that's very present in CrossFit. I think it's just inherently part of the CrossFit community. Um, Kip, we just had a question as well. Uh, how do you motivate yourself to start? How would, how would you, how do you motivate yourself to start, Kip? <laughs> um signing up for the fundamentals course <laughs> um so i mean like, there's a few different things there like one can be what is your why what's your reason you're wanting to do this um understanding your reason for wanting to do this can for a lot of people be a good motivating factor um times when they're feeling a bit sore feeling a bit beat up whatever else and maybe they've been going a couple of days that week and they've got a third session coming up and they don't really feel like it um remembering your why your reason why it is that you want to start can help you um in terms of getting started honestly it's, it's just it's getting in there for that first session that first session is the hardest um which i know if you haven't done a session before it's a really good thing you want to hear but my point there i'm trying to make out is after that first session, it gets a little bit easier. It gets a little bit easier going along. You've met some of the people, um, particularly if you're starting the fundamentals course, you understand that everybody is starting from the same point. Um, everybody that comes along to that course is a little bit nervous when they first show up. You're not alone with those feelings. Um, it's a very normal, natural human thing to feel and experience. Mm -hmm. um, just getting amongst it, just, just getting started, getting that first session in, getting that first session done, um, meeting some of the people, building a little bit of relationship and rapport with some of them um, helps you continue to keep on going. Going. um it's, it's just it's like anything it's just just getting started it's just yeah, yeah for sure session, once you've done that hopefully you know you can carry on for another couple and then after a bit the habit gets created and yeah, yeah. so as, as an example like especially in like in football i'm just gonna keep going back to football because that's my previous that's biggest what you know? that's what i know that's what i know like my why at the time was i wanted to be the best d lineman i could be and I knew that other teams, other D linemen and other teams were working. And so if I didn't want to do a morning run, I'd be like, crap, I'm up at like 4.30 a.m. I got a morning run at 5.30. I'm like, I don't want to do this, but I'm like, other pe I know other people are doing this, so I got to do it. It could be your why is like, you have kids, right? You have kids, you want to be able to grow, grow up with your kids and continuously, you know, you, you don't want to be that dad that's like, does the dad grow? And every time he stands up, was like, you want to play catch with me, dad? No, I can't, son. I'm stuck on the couch here. <laughs> come play, come watch football with me. Like, you know, I, there's a whole bunch of different reasons why, but it is, as Kip was saying, very important to remember your why, especially in times where everything else seems to be hurting or everything else seems to be like, you know, you can you can come up with a million excuses you can, there's always an excuse that you can always say but at the end of the day you have to remember your why and be become disciplined enough to at least t remind yourself of your why and that'll help you for sure go back to go back to the gym or go back to you know learning to be a little bit healthier um uh, I have another one. I have another question from someone from the chat here was asking about strongman competitions and CrossFit competitions. Is there a lot of like, it, it's completely random, but is there a lot of like PED use or performance enhancing drug use, stuff like that, that is, uh, that's present in these competitions or are they all tested? Um, strongman is an attested sport. Um, I, I know with some of the divisions, I'm sure it's probably frowned upon. Um, but it is an attested sport. Um, it's understood that when you get to that top level, a lot of people are on PEDs, a lot of people are on hormonal supplementation or therapy or whatever else. Um, and that's, that's just the reality of it. I mean, with strongmen, they're trying to find the biggest, strongest, baddest mother effers. Uh, I'm this way, sorry. Um, but <laughs> if you're trying to find the biggest, strongest possible people, you, and that's, that's what people care about when they're watching the sport. It's quite often, a lot of them are going, quite often, a lot of the top guys might be on drugs. Um, I'm not saying that everybody is. There's definitely, I know one or two that have made it to World Strongest Man that have done well there um, that weren't on drugs. Um, and they did incredibly well. Um, Eddie Williams from Australia for one of them. 
Um, but um, that is a very big part, not a very big part, for and when you get to that pinnacle of the sport, that is a big part of what's going on. It's hard to therefore. avoid. It's hard to avoid yeah. that, especially yeah. just the inherent nature of the sport. It's hard to avoid people using those per- performance enhancing drugs when the goal is performance. That is, yes. <laughs> you're trying to push yourself above what's humanly capable or naturally capable. And to do that, m- most people would just... That's how you. That's how you do that. That's how you push yourself that yeah. little bit further. Um, Kip, and, just yeah, to be respectful. Of your, a little bit more. Yeah, just Sorry. to be respectful of your time here. I'm just gonna. We're gonna go talk about just general fitness questions and just get hopefully getting you know using some of your expertise just to give some myself included some advice on just general life well being, um, if you don't mm-hmm. mind. Uh, so one of the questions is that: Is it true that gaining weight is harder than losing weight? What do you? What are your thoughts on that? Like, I ha- someone was asking if, if gaining weight is actually harder than losing weight. Um, they're trying to lose weight, but they have people in their circles that are like, I'm trying to gain weight, and it's so much harder to gain weight than lose weight. What do you say? Yes and no. It depends on the individual, um, their past, what their relationship with food and exercise is and everything else. Um, if you don't have a good relationship with food, if you're somebody that tends to use it as a coping mechanism, um, if you're somebody that binge eats when you're not feeling very good about yourself, um, that can be a really hard habit to break. So for some of those people, that can be really hard for them to learn how to start to lose weight, um, controlling the caloric intake as well as the output in terms of energy with exercise and everything else. Um, the other flip side as well, you've had some people that have been skinny their whole life and they have a hard time trying to eat enough food to actually put on some weight. Um, so for those people, um, putting weight, gaining weight there can be really difficult. Um, I've been in both camps before. Um, I have been, I grew up feeling like I was quite overweight. Um, I mean, like I was 102 kilos and six foot when I was about, before I turned 16. Um, so back then, like I was, I was a big boy. Um, that's 225 pounds for, for those um, in the imperial system over there for you guys. Um, but I was a big boy growing up. Um, I, I always felt like I was a bit chubbier. I always felt like the fat kid in, in, in my friend group. Um, I lost a lot of weight um, once I left school, once I got into my late teens, getting a lot more into the gym, um, adjusting my eating and everything else, learning more about nutrition and everything. Um, and I ended up getting down to 70 kilos, which I think is about 155 pounds. Let me, let me check really quickly. That sounds about right, around there. Oh, the wrong mess sorry two seconds uh you're 155 pounds yeah. um and so at the moment i compete in the under 105s and strongman um so i think that's about 231 pounds um so i've gone up i've come down i've gone back up um when i got into strongman i was sitting around 92 kilos 93 kilos which is about 200 pounds um and it took me two years of just gorging myself on food on good quality foods, not just shit, not just anything I wanted to eat. Um, I made sure I had all the good foods first off, all my um, good meat sources, all my proteins, all my veggies, a heap of veggies, um, cause you gotta keep that gut nice and healthy. Um, and then from there, I'd chuck in the chocolates and the shakes and the other bits and pieces as well, but make sure I'm getting the good stuff in first. Um, but that took me a good couple of years to put on that additional 10, 10 15 kilos that I, that I wanted to gain for Strongman to be more competitive in it. Because um, when you're pulling a truck and you're in a harness, you're leaning forward on that harness, having that additional 10, 15 kilos definitely helps the inertia of getting that truck moving. Um, sure. But for me, that was hard work. Um, honestly, for that couple of years, I was miserable. I, I hated eating. Um, and I don't like that because I've been a fat kid. I love food. I love eating food. I love eating good, tasty, healthy food. Well, not necessarily healthy. I do like healthy food. I've learned yeah, to love sure. things that are good. Um, but I love eating good, tasty food. Um, so for a couple of years there where I hated eating, where I dreaded it because it had become my job. It was what I needed to do in order to achieve my goals. Um, it got hard. It got hard for a while. And it took me a bit once I managed to hit my weight to actually get back into having that different relationship with food where I can kind of enjoy it more. I don't always have to stuff myself full. Um, so to answer your question, and this is honestly the thing with a lot of questions in the fitness industry and in the health industry. Um, when I was studying to be an osteopath, a lot of the questions in there were exactly the same. And the answer was always, it depends. It depends on where the person is at, where they're trying to go. Mm-hmm. Um, what it is they're having difficulty with and whatever else. Mm-hmm. Um, so for some people, really easy to lose weight. For some people, really easy to put weight on. For others, it can be really difficult to do those things as well. So to answer your question, it depends. Yep. I'm sorry, I can't nope. give you something to that knowing the individual. But That's okay. Yeah. I mean, you, you you touch on both aspects and I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure the viewers, I can appreciate that. I'm pretty sure the viewers can appreciate that as well. Like it's a very individual basis. And I think you'd agree with me that like a, a fitness journey is very individualized and can be 
can be very different depending on who you are as a person. Um, just because we're all in different circumstances, we're all in different stages of life. It's, it it's varies extremely from person to person. Um, yeah. So then we already talked about what your definition of being fit is. So that's cool. Um, we have we had another question earlier on. Uh, a gentleman was saying that a cro CrossFit he's heard that CrossFit causes a lot of injuries. Um, so firstly, is that true? What do you say? Again, yes and no. Okay. Yep. No, that's okay. <laughs> the only way, the only way you can guarantee yourself not to get injured is to stay on the couch and not do anything with your body. Um, <laughs> Like yep. I've, I've spoken to a few people over the years who told me that they don't want to get into CrossFit. They'd rather do running because they don't want to get injured. And I go back to the fact that more than half the people that take up running get injured from running. Um, so whilst, yes, a lot of um, old school physios who don't understand the modern day, the modern age, what goes on with the different exercise options, everything else these days, um, some of them try to steer people away from lifting weights and try to steer them into running because they think they won't get injured. That's not the case. You're going to get injured at some point. Most people, most people will get injured at some point. Um, just doing your best to make sure that you're moving well, doing mm -hmm. your best to make sure that you're yeah, basically doing well. Uh, not doing well, sorry, moving well. Um, so having a coach that actually watches, assessing your movement, um, maybe they are doing your programming for you and stuff as well, will help you um, avoid those things more often. Uh, making sure that you're staying on top of your recovery, your flexibility, your mobility, making sure that you're stretching. And I learned this the hard way because I used to beat the shit out of my body and I didn't stretch at all. Um, and I got away with it in my early 20s. And once I hit my mid-20s, my body said, no, nah, we're not doing this anymore, mate. You start taking care of yourself. Yeah. Um, so I learned the hard way there. Um, but yeah, though, there's some people get injured doing CrossFit, but at the same time, some people get injured walking down a set of stairs. Some people yep. get injured when they go skating on the ice and everything else. And it's, 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 it's trying to find something that you enjoy in terms of fitness. If you're doing it for health and everything else, finding a form of fitness, someone finding a form of exercise that you enjoy, hopefully one that agrees with your body, i.e. Um, if you're 60 year old, 60 years, 60 years old. American football probably isn't going to be the best thing for you. Yeah. Um, full contact rugby is probably not going to be the best thing for you at 60 years old. Um, I know there's still some people that do that, and hopefully those people manage to keep themselves healthy, which is cool. Um, but again, like the only way that you can guarantee you will not get injured is to keep your ass on the couch and not do anything. But that's mm -hmm. not going to be good for your health at all. So then, Hope that answers your question. yep, no, for sure. So then, if one decided to do, they they're like CrossFit's my thing. I would love to do CrossFit. I'm going to learn how to do CrossFit but I don't, I want to minimize my chances of getting injured. So you were talking about moving well and yeah. other than moving well, is there anything that they can do to help prevent injuries? Maybe in terms of supplementation, maybe in terms of like stuff they can do at home. Is there anything that they can do to help prevent the onset of injuries? Kind of like a uh, preventative measures, let's say. Yeah. Um, so being proactive as opposed to reactive, if you can, exactly, in terms yeah. of like stretching, mobility, um, stretching, as I just said, like there's a few different programs online these days where you can uh, just click play. It'll be a 20 minute uh, yin yoga stretching routine and that'll help you loosen up your muscles, um, help take some of the stress off and whatnot. Um, rolling out, foam rolling, getting a lacrosse ball, getting into those trigger points, um, getting a massage once a week can be really good. Um, going to the physio every week or every two weeks can be really beneficial as well. Um, yeah, I had another thing here I wanted to say. I've forgotten. Sorry, bro. No, that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. That makes sense. Yep. Um, and then, oh, yeah, you're saying I was gonna say, in terms yeah. of the movement, it's getting, getting a coach who knows what they're doing. Um, nothing against PTs that are fresh out of uh getting their six month uh degree or whatever else. Um, but if you can find somebody that has a bit of a track record or a bit of experience dealing with many different people from many different walks of life, that's probably going to be your best bet. Um, and I say that because you might be just a general pop and average Joe. And if you go to somebody who's only ever worked with high performance athletes, that's what they're going to know. Um, the metaphor we can use there is that if all you have is a hammer, every problem is a nail. Yeah. Um, they're only used to working with athletes. They're only used to working with people that have great mobility, the ability to be able to get their heads through or get their, their arms behind the heads really well. Um, the ability to be able to squat really deep naturally off the cuff. Um, if they're only used to working with those people and they come and meet somebody that has some restrictions with some of those things, um, sometimes they don't know how to deal with those things. They don't know how to optimize them. Um, so just trying to find a coach that works with somebody at your level, mm -hmm. i.e. most people that's going to be general population or if you're a high performance athlete trying to find somebody that works or has history working with high performance athletes so that they can try to help optimize your movement for those things um yeah I hope that makes yep. sense. no for sure <laughs> um 
So we're getting we're getting to the end. I don't want, I don't want to take too much more of your time. I have four, I have four more questions. I have four more questions for you. All right. The next one. You can uh, that's one in there as well. It's long. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I was talking to my buddy just earlier, and he has kind of a slighter build, um, and he's he personally is not looking to like bulk up so much as to tone. Um, is there? Is there, well, if you could give them one tip, not to just bulk up, but kind of just like tone out, how would you, what, what tip would you give them for, for that? I'd say there's a lot of, um, misinformation or just, just the wrong ideas. I can't think of the right word here. Sorry. Mm. Um, but around muscle tone per se. So people say that they don't want to build muscle. They just want to tone it. Um, very often what that actually is, is one, making sure that you have enough muscle on your body so that you can actually see it. And then two, reducing your fat level enough, that your fat, your body fat percentage enough to a low enough level that you can actually see and display that muscle. Um, so, I mean, the, the old back in the day, these days, a lot more women lift weights, which I love. I fucking love that. Um, I think that's so cool um, because the back in the day, a lot of people, a lot of females in particular, used to say, I don't want to lift weights. So I don't want to turn into a man. And then you get some people on the internet these days, some men on the internet saying, oh, you know, uh, I, I don't need to go down that hole, sorry. But let's get back to the muscle tone thing. Um, <laughs> having enough muscle on your frame. So doing some, lifting some um, free weights, lifting mm -hmm. some, doing some form of resistance training so that your muscles can be stronger. Um, if you are, let's say, for example, let's use the bench press, for example. Yep. Let's say you're capable of bench pressing 60 kilos or 135 pounds and you want to bench press 100 kilos or 225 pounds. As you get your bench press from that 135 up to that 225, not only will you get stronger, but you mm -hmm. also look like somebody who's capable of benching 225. Um, so you'll get stronger, you'll build a little bit of muscle, which is very often a nice thing. Um, if you're somebody that spends some time in a gym and you see somebody with muscle not just guys but girls as well um you learn to appreciate that because you understand all the hard work that's gone into managing to be able to achieve that and acquire that muscle um there's a lot of hard work there but in terms of tiny it's making sure you have some muscle on your frame first off um, if you are very slight, maybe doing some strength training for a couple of months, maybe doing a hypertrophy program where you're trying to build a little bit of muscle. And then from there, maybe you then lean out afterwards. Maybe you titrate down the amount of calories you are consuming um, so that you can lean out a bit, drop a little bit of body fats. Maybe you go and join a CrossFit gym um, to help you lean out a bit with all the cardio we do, with all the high intensity. Um, I can go down many rabbit holes here. One I just want to touch on really quickly yeah. is quite often with cardio, you'll burn a, you'll burn a bunch of calories in the moment whilst you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And then once you've finished, unless it was really high intensity, quite often it'll stop there. But one of the big benefits about lifting weights is on top of the strength, on top of the muscle, on top of all that other stuff is um, from there, your body takes long to recover from that. So your metabolic rate will be increased for the next most people. I want to say at least the next 48 to 72 hours um, so that your body is still continuing to burn calories so it can recover from that strength training you've done, that hypertrophy work you've yeah. done, um, which will help you, again, get a little bit leaner as yeah. well if you're trying to lean out, if you're trying to display that muscle a bit better. Um, yeah. I hope that answers your question about muscle tone. For sure. No, it does. It does. So it, if I could try summarizing it, like, would you, you would say that it would be best to try like a, like a classic bulking and then cutting phase kind of deal, or is that separate than what you were actually talking about? It, it, it again, it depends. It depends yeah. on the individual. If yeah. they are very slight um, and they're wanting to tone per se quite often, and you can't get someone to do something they don't want to do very well or for mm -hmm. very long or very much consistency. But I try to educate them on things are probably going to work better for your goals if we spend a couple of months, two, three, six months trying to get you a bit stronger, trying to put a little bit of muscle on your frame. And then after that, we can then lean you out a bit more and try to retain that muscle whilst that body fat goes down. Yep. Um, that's when your muscles are going to look toned. That's when you're going to look great with your shirt off um, when you're at the beach over summer or whatever else. Um, yeah. Yeah, cool. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and then we had we had a, a little bit. Oh, CrossFit is swimming. It. So, does CrossFit have swimming and running components as well as a part of it? Uh, it can do. Yep. So my 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 colors not funny. There we go. Uh, it can do. Um, those will be considered some of your cardio-based movements. Mm -hmm. um, so again, we have weightlifting movements, we have gymnastics movements, which seem to be body weight related, related, and we have cardio movements, which can be your running, can be swimming. Um, those are definitely movements that can come up in CrossFit. Obviously, yeah. within our gym, we don't have a swimming pool. Yeah. I want to say 99.9% .9 of CrossFit gyms don't have a swimming pool at their place. Um, but if it's somebody who's getting competitive in CrossFit, once or twice a week, some of those, sorry, 
once every week or two. Some of those people will go along to a swimmer a swimming pool mm -hmm. um practice their swimming so they've got the skill there so they've built up the capacities with that um they will have a lot of fitness from all the other things i've done as well but practicing the actual skill of swimming yep. is something they'll want to practice as well so when it does come up in a competition um they're capable they're ready they're, they're able to do it um so swimming and running can be incorporated into crossfit running especially quite a lot um they're not necessary for crossfit um but they are two really good tools that we can use for your crossfit training and as you as you're saying as you're saying it is part of that whole fitness fitness aspect of being ready to do whatever life comes your way like yeah. you don't want to be yeah, landlocked as a unknown. fit person <laughs> you want to be like oh i'm in a pool of water yeah, yeah. that's it for me i can do anything else yeah, but yeah, except yeah. for swim <laughs> that's it <laughs> but okay cool and then um diet oh so again for the same for the for the same same person what is the best tip for someone to get stronger like, would you say do the free weights? Would you say, you know, do CrossFit? Would powerlifting be better? Is there a certain kind of exercise program where you use like, if you want to get just strong, this is the one that I would suggest. What would you say? All the above you mentioned will get you stronger depending yep. on where you're starting at. So, I mean, like if you've been a high level powerlifter, CrossFit's probably not going to make you very much stronger in terms of your peak lifting weights. Um, you'll probably get a lot stronger with your body weight, i.e. doing pull-ups, dips, uh, lunges, jumping onto a box, whatever else, jumping onto a high box. Um, in terms of strength training, it depends on the individual and what it is they're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. If they're trying to get as absolutely uh, strong as they possibly can, I'd look at something like powerlifting for static strength, i.e. strength when you're just standing on the spot moving from point A to point B. Yep. Um, if you're wanting a more well-balanced, more whole round strength, that actually applies a lot more out into the real world, a lot more functional strength, as we'd say. Um, that's 100% where Strongman comes into it. Because we still have those heavy lifts and stuff as well, but we also carry heavy things, we move heavy things around. Um, there's a lot of odd objects in awkward positions which when you're out in the real world when your mate calls you over to help him lift his couch or move his fridge or his tv or whatever else um those aren't going to be nice perfectly optimized barbells yeah they're going to be odd objects they're going to be in awkward positions um so if you're wanting to get as strong as you can well rounded with functional movements things are going to come up in real life strong man would be the way to go with that um if you're just getting started with strength training Honestly, it's just a, like a typical three day a week program, three by five squats twice a week, maybe three times a week when you're first starting, probably twice a week though for most people. Um, one set of five deadlift once a week, um, three sets of as many strict pull ups or chin ups as you can, um, three sets of five bench press, three sets of five overhead press, maybe some rows, maybe some power cleans, other things in there. Um, I.e., the starting strength program, as it's called by Mark Ripito, um, is the program if you've never done strength training before um that i would steer people towards because it will build your base of strength up like nothing else so much faster than anything else that i've noticed or experienced or experimented with with different people um and that'll build your base of strength up and but what's that called if, again if sorry? Not, as, sorry what's that called again starting strength starting strength okay yep yep the, cool. It's a book and program by Mark Ripito. And then from there, once you can no longer make gains with that, you can go into more advanced programs, more media, mediocre, not mediocre, sorry. Intermediate. Mid level. Intermediate. There you go. Thank you, right? No problem. Word. Um, <laughs> more, move more to intermediate programs yep. once you can no longer progress on starting strength. And then instead of increasing the weight from session to session, it becomes increasing the weight from week to week. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, you start looking into month long cycles where you increase the weight from month to month and other bits and pieces. Um, and then you start getting into more periodization and everything else as well. But if you're just getting into strength training or if you're just trying to get a little bit stronger and you're not really interested on maximal possible strength, absolutely optimizing it, lifting weights, lifting weights, um, doing it well with good uh, good movement so that like, for example, the bench press, if you go into a regular gym or the bench press or the squat, uh, for the bench press, you'll see people, look, 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 you'll see a lot of people coming down, not actually touching the chest or they'll come up, they won't quite lock up their elbows. They're still moving, which is awesome. They're still going a little, a little bit stronger from that, which is awesome. But moving through that full range of motion from point A to point B, taking your joints through the full range of motion um, will build a lot more strength a lot quicker. Same with the squat. You'll go into a regular gym and you'll see very rarely where you see somebody squatting below parallel and hips below their knees. Yeah. Quite often, it's just they haven't been taught. They don't know how to do it. Um, so again, going back to that whole getting a coach who knows what they're doing, getting a coach to teach you how to drive your knees out as you squat down and see hips down between your, your heels, um, keeping that torso nice and upright if we're in a high bar or a little bit more hunched over if we're in a low bar like mm -hmm. everyone likes to do sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. Help you just just get more out of those movements. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Does that Perfect. make sense? Yep. That's lift, awesome. Lift things. Yeah, lift, lift things. things. Often will get you stronger. 
Lift things <laughs> often. Practice lifting things well. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find the yeah. starting strength. I'll probably, on the YouTube video, I'll probably put it on the description. Um, I, I've, I've used Starting Strength by Mark Ripto. Fantastic program, especially when I was just starting to actually go to the gym. It was fantastic. Um, I'll put that in the link in the description below. Um, we're going to finish that off here. Kip, is there anything else, after everything we said, is there anything else you'd like to end us off with? Any kind of tips for anyone out there? Would you like to give a plug for something? Shout out to someone. What would you like to do? Anything that you'd like to end off with? Um, biggest tip I can give, a biggest piece of advice, and I think I mentioned earlier, is just consistency. Consistency is key in terms of anything fitness related, in terms of anything health related quite often. Um, just, just finding something you can be consistent with. And so when I say that, what I mean is quite often in terms of when we try to work with people on their diet is trying to make small, sustainable changes. Instead of trying to change everything up all at once, when you go hard for a week or two and you kind of fall off because it's too hard, it's too much. Making small, sustainable changes, i.e. starting with changing your breakfast for a week or maybe you're introducing eating breakfast again for a week. Yep. Um, and then from there, once you're consistent with that, then we can start to play with your lunch a little bit. We can start playing with the snacks at night. Um, if you're just getting into exercise, trying to find something that you enjoy or find something that you feel challenges you and you feel an accomplishment or an achievement once you've finished um, can be a really big thing in order for you to be able to stay consistent with it. You can have the perfect program. You can have the best, most optimized program in the world. But if it's not something you enjoy, if it's not something you're going to do consistently, it's not going to work for you. Um, so just trying to find something ideally that you enjoy so that you actually enjoy the work, you enjoy spending that time there, going through there, all those hard things or that hardship that you go through when you do training sometimes um, can be a very big thing for it. It can be a very big thing in terms of you being able to achieve your goals and get those outcomes you're looking for, whether that's losing weight, whether that's getting healthier, whether that's being able to run around with your grandkids and pick them up and throw them around um, when you're 60, 70 years old. Um, whatever it is you're trying to do is trying to find a way that you can do it consistently, sustainably, ideally um that'd be my biggest piece of advice with that and then in terms of plugging things if you are interested in crossfit um if you live in christchurch we have our next fundamentals course starting this coming monday uh what do we say third of november so i think it'll be about the seventh ish of november um on the Monday. So that means Monday, Tuesday, Thursday at 6.30 p.m. for three weeks. First week is free if you guys want to come along and try it out. Um, if you're not from Christchurch and you want to try some CrossFit, Google CrossFit in your area, um, find the different gyms, find the ones that do a fundamentals course or do some one-on-one -on -one sessions before you get into the regular classes so that you can hit the ground running, so that you have a good foundation of movement. Because once you learn how to move poorly, it's really bloody hard how to unlearn that and learn how to move properly afterwards. So it's trying to find someone that's going to set you up for success in the long run with the fundamentals course or with a few one-on-one -on -one sessions before you jump into your classes um, would, would be, be a big thing there as well. Perfect. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, no problem. I would like to say, guys, that uh, I moving on uh, uh, addition to Kip, practice makes permanent, not necessarily perfect. That's something my uh, football teacher always, uh, football instructor always uh, taught us. So make sure you practice perfect. That way, your practice becomes perfect. If you practice imperfect, <laughs> then it'll just become permanent. All right. With that, Kip, thank you very much for joining me uh, on the stream. It'll be on YouTube. Me. No problem, man. I will see you tomorrow. And uh, for cool. everyone else, I'll see you Most in a little nice. bit. All right. Take care, guys. <laughs> Cheers, Aaron. Cheers. And that is Kip, everybody. Um, that was our first interview. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope I did well. I'm going to be uploading this on YouTube as well. Uh, once I finish recording this and, and downloading it, then I'll upload it. Everything else will be on YouTube. I'll link my YouTube somewhere if it's not already linked. Thank you for joining us. Um, you can also find some more some more interviews in the coming weeks uh, with various different paramedics. I am a paramedic myself, so I would like to bring more so that kind of profession into the light. Uh, this is kind of like a my first ever attempt at an interview on stream. So if I need any, I need tips and suggestions so if you guys have any please let let me know uh whether dm whether on the on youtube when i upload it uh anything i'll take it all so um thank you sly fox i appreciate it i'm gonna head out now i'm gonna probably jump back on stream but i'll be streaming with my buddy quasi we're gonna be playing some apex but that's it for the just chatting session thank you guys very much and until next time i'll see you later